And we're going to move right along uh, to our next session with uh, Jonas Boner, uh, Transcending the Barriers to Elasticity, which is sponsored by Akka. Uh, Jonas is the inventor of Akka and the CTO and co-founder of Lightbend. He's a distributed systems innovator and OSS community leader. Uh, he wrote the very influential Reactive Manifesto and Reactive Principles and numerous design books that set the foundations for how we tend to think about and build systems today. The Reactive Manifesto in particular uh, really was uh, an eye-opener for a, a lot of uh, architects about the way to think about systems. Uh, Jonas is the originator of Akka, the flagship solution from Lightbend for building, operating, and securing distributed applications. He's also an amateur jazz musician and a passionate skier who holds a Bachelor of Science from Mid-Sweden University. So uh, please welcome me in joining Jonas. Thanks a lot, Neil. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about elasticity here and, 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 uh, and how we, as developers, you know, could help Sort of transcending the barriers to elasticity because there there are many. Uh, sort of so to sort of free up the infrastructure to do what is best, you know, by by doing you know uh, uh, by sort of leveraging good principles up in the application stack. So, but let's start with 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 some definitions. You know, el, el, what does really elastic mean? You know, Merriam-Webster defines it as being capable of ready change or easy expansion and and con and contraction, and you know I'd say that sort of my sort of definition is that it's a system that stays responsive under any external factor, you know, workload, operations failures, by by scaling up or down on demand. So sort of being able to react, it's really being able to react to changes by sort of increasing or decreasing resources allocated to service, you know, the inputs that are arriving into the, into the system and sort of allow the application to be, to be sort of stretched out or contracted in a transparent fashion as a reaction you know, to, to these changes of inputs. And, and most people talk about, you know, elasticity to be able to really have a workload and, and, that, and that's what, or, or sort of changes in, in workload. And that's, of course, very, very important, being able to scale up or down compute, scale in and out servers, you know, scale data. And, and address sort of deep vari variations in, in workload in, in general. But I also think that it's, it's, it's quite important to think about ops here as well. You know, how do operate, how can we make it easier for operations to think, to rebalance and repartition workloads to enable sort of upgrades without any, any, any downtime, schema changes and maintenance events and so on. And that sort of ties very much also into el elasticity. And of course, failure as well, being able to recover, move, and replicate workloads, you know, as a react, as a response to <clears throat> to failure, hardware failure, network failure, or system failures. So, with that little bit of sort of broader uh, definition in mind, um, you know, I'll, let's dive into you know some of, some of the barriers to elasticity. Um, you know, I for, for, like first, I want to say that I don't I, I don't think that elastic cloud infrastructure really translates to application el elasticity. I, th I see them as two different things that need to work in tandem. Um, and, and as developers, we can, you know, there are many barriers that we, that we can run into, you know, and, 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 and unless we think ahead, you know, we, 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 we as developers and also operation staff, you know, might be forced to rethink and rewrite application to, to sort of transcend each one of these, of these of these barriers, you know, the, the, the first one, this is of course very, very high level because I only have 30 minutes. So the first thing to watch out for is compute saturation, meaning sort of IO being, be, being sort of compute, compute bound. Uh, that usually, you know, means very poor resource ut u utilization. And it's, and it's often due to sort of contention, contention on, on, share, on shared state. I mean, I mean uh, the, the, the second sort of Barrier that many run into is I/O saturation. I mean, it's often due to her blocking I/O and and synchronous messaging, synchronous R RPC, and so on between uh, you know services and nodes and so on. And and it's you know it's partly what also drives database sa sa saturation. And, and it's unfortunate that we you know often see sort of many high compute applications are idling because the database is is, is saturated. Uh, the the third the third thing to watch out for is is you know what I named here connection saturation. It might not be the best name, but but what I'm what I mean here is like 
that you know where you end up in a sit in a situation where you exhaust the connection pool. You know, more compute nodes actually doesn't help. You know, they yield the diminishing returns because there's too much con contention on 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 the on the single uh, uh, database or resource. You know, that you would like to 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 connect to. And and uh, you know that might get, it also might make 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 it hard to know you know when should you scale up or, or rather scale out and, and and scale in and, and, and stuff like that, and finally you know how 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 do we handle disaster recovery you know we here 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 we need to start thinking about things like region to region, replication stretching out the application up into multi region sometimes in, onto multi cloud as well. And 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 manage you know the RTO the recovery time which which if if not done correctly can be can be quite uh, you know high um, and of course you know as as you move the application stretch it out and across d different geographic regions we and we you know you, we we need to think hard about security and regulations compliance and all of those things um, so you know the thing is that they like most. Most problems um, in distributed systems revolve revolve around how we manage distributed data, and uh, and database replication, you know, is it really really imposes a lot of application and app or an ops limits, and 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 um, you know the most common approach is to distribute the database, yeah. and 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 there, and, the, and there are sort of three different archetypes. Uh, if we should be high level, you know, to 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 this, the first one is physical replication, uh, of, of sort of binary data down at the infrastructure level. You know, this you know low level sort of a black box is a little bit inflexible. You know, sort of a brute force approach and can be hard to do like things like ro rolling rolling upgrades and so on. The second thing or the second archetype is logical replication that is done at the database level. You know, in, in, and here you sort of replicate the DML, the data modification language. And, and uh, one of the problems here is that, you know, since we don't have a DDL uh, uh, replicated, you, you know, we can't really replicate schema, schema changes, like views, you know, large object sequences, you know, foreign table, you know, and, and stuff like that. So, so that leaves us with, like, with, with schema rep, rep, replication, which, which, you know, sometimes can be hard to operate, honestly. Uh, and and uh, it's sort of it sometimes you know have has, has a tendency to to modify application behavior. It's not it's not completely tra transparent. It, it can lead to to consistency conflicts and so on. So in 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 my experience, you know, it's it's, it's better to think about not distributing the database per se. You know, low level down at the infrastructure level, but instead you know think how we write the application and, and, and write it in a way that we can distribute the data itself up in the application tier. And, the, and if we do this, you know, the, you know correctly, uh, um, I'll talk a little bit about it. I don't have that much time, but I'll talk a little bit about it. You know, it's like, then we can let the in-memory state, you know, the, or your actual domain model, your, your state in the, in the actual microservices, you know, be the source of truth. And, and, uh, and, and then you end up with a, with a, with a model that is where state replication and state persistence is actually application and domain aware. So you, you don't need to map, you know, your, your in-memory state down to the actual database. It, it, instead, you can use for any, any data structure. Uh, uh, and and, and um, it, it also gives, it makes it, you know, fairly easy to be, to be, to, 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 to divide and conquer, you know, working with smaller data sets that leads to, to, to less contention and so on, and, uh, and allows things like efficient charting or replication. And, and uh, as, I will, as, as I will talk about, you know, managing state, you know, in this way or persistence in this way up in the app tier means that we can, we can get lots lower latency because the data is right there in your application instead of you need to do another network hop down to the database and all this, go and fetch the state. And when, you do, when you're done with it, you need to store it back into the database. So, so, so uh, it also helps, uh, you know. I, I think with with migrations, stuff, stuff like that, because everything you have, you know, is, is is up in the app tier, you know, in, in like in, under under the developer's fingers, and there's not not any mapping have to do down to the database below, and and in in, in practice, you know, sort of a a, a foundational sort of, sort of sort of tool or pattern here is use event driven architecture. You know, that that gets us a long way, you know, alongside things like event sourcing. <coughs> And so on. I don't. I don't have enough time to talk about this in detail here, but 
I'm just I'm just hinting at them. So you know the biggest enemy of, of elasticity is contention. You know, and we really need to work hard at minimizing contention. And 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 um, and and when I say contention, you know, I mean I mean access. You know, so parallel access to shared resources in the system. It's, it's really contention that kills scalability and also kills performance. And and, and be, being able to be then asynchronous and non-blocking using using non-blocking you know I/O and so on. You know that sort of gives the caller the option to to be able to perform other work asynchronously rather than being sort of blocked and waiting for resources to become available. So queue up in sort of wait time and add wait time to this to the system and that. That means that we can we can be a lot more efficient in how we use resources. We can be more cost efficient, being more energy efficient, and and you know in practice it means you know it, 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 so it can be achieved by allowing the caller to simply put a request on the queue and register a callback uh, to be notified later when the result is available and then return immediately after after doing so you know and and sort of freeing up the thread or the resources to be used by others and continue execution and then and then be called sort of called asynchronously when the result arrives. Uh, also things like you know data partitioning is extremely important here. I mean being able to partition your data into smaller data sets for minimizing contention. And and also you know I not really sharing mutable state you know freely because as soon as you do that you need to introduce locks and wait times and queues and stuff like that. Instead share immutable facts. I'm going to get more into that later. Uh, it, it's really, you know, it really needs to be async and non-blocking all the way down, you know. So it's really the weakest link in the chain that matters. And there's two, two, there's two concepts that are really important here uh, to to be aware of. First, we have contention. You know, that can be defined as the wait time, waiting, or queuing for shared resources. And the second thing uh, that is also, you know, is important at play here is is what is called coherency. And that is sort of the delay for data to become consistent. And we have Omdahl's law that talks about contention, you know, how, can, how, how contention affects the parallel system and how contention can sort of give diminishing returns as you add, uh, uh, as you sort of uh, try to scale up the system. As you, as you can see here, you know, that the more it, it, you know, it, it very, very hard hits on how much speed up we have you know on the vertical axis uh, uh, depending on 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 how much uh, uh, sort of parallelization we have we have in the system as we scale it out and and um, but that's not the end of the story we also have the universal scale scalability law which we in a way sort of builds on our own on law by adding coherency and as i said coherency can give negative results you know, so you what we really want to achieve here is linear scalability. That's the sort of the 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 the, 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 the straight line there. On those law, as I said, as as, as con contention, but but if you don't take you know coherency into account or incoherency you know in, into account, then 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 you might miss that 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 is actually you know as you add resources to the system, more nodes, more cores, you can actually get negative results. Uh, so you know, so this is something to really be aware of. Um, so I really think that you know, I mean, on a fundamental level, systems need to be need to be decoupled. I think we all can agree with that, and and they they need to be decoupled, you know, in time. That's you know, de decoupling systems in time is really what gives us concurrency. It so adds sort of an asynchronous boundary, and and, and 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 gives us loose coupling. But we also need to decouple the systems in space, and decoupling in space is what gives us distribution. You know, is be able to communicate across. Context across cores, across nodes, across you know data centers, clouds, etc., and 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 these things really can provide the foundation for resiliency, for mobility, and for elasticity. Uh, you know, I, this, this might be a contentious one, but but I I'm I'm a, I'm a firm believe firm believer that you know strong consistency is the wrong default in distributed systems. You know. Uh, uh, I mean, we often use strong consistency just out of habit, in inertia. You know, it's, it's how we've always done things. But it really adds a lot of contention. It adds wait time. It's often too brittle, and it's really hard to make available. It's hard to make resilient. As Pat Helen, you know, I've said nu 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 numerous times. These are actually two quotes from two different papers. Uh, you know, he he he's been, he said that the developers simply do not implement large scalable applications, assuming distributed transactions. 
two-phase commit is the anti-availability protocol. And, and when, you, when you think about it, it's, it's not really anything to be, to be surprised about because it's, it's not really how the world works. You know? The world is inherently, eventually consistent you know, with causality at play. And pretending that is everything is strongly consistent, you know, can sometimes make things worse, even though it is a very great developer convenience. It is a leaky abstraction. You know, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with strong consistency. You know, where it works is just is like magic, you know. It it, it, it removes so many sort of problems for us. But I think it's a wrong default and it should be used like carefully and deliberately where you absolutely need it, you know. So so, you know, to, to, to sum things up, don't carry around more guarantees than you, than, than you need, you know, since every guarantee that you add to your system has a price. It has a price in terms of scalability, in terms of resilience, reliability, availability, maintainability, and so on. So I, I think it's better to start with the weakest guarantees possible and then analyze the system and then think, you know, okay, where do I need to, to, to layer in stronger guarantees and do it in those places, not just as a like, wet blanket across your whole system, so to speak. The truth is actually that, you know, a distributed system is really a never ending stream towards convergence, you know. It's always in the process of convergence, but it never ever reaches the state, as in final state of convergence. So, so we can assume that we will never ever reach it. If we do, you know, it's usually just for brief moments in time, and then it's back to, sort of, to 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 the process of convergence. So the system in a, in a distributed system is really constantly in motion. It's constantly in a state of change. It's always trying to catch up to whatever happens over there or over there. And and there's really no now, you know, you know it's really no globally consistent now no no globally cons consistent present you know as as the expression goes it's all in the in the eye of the, of the beholder you know present and and the and now is really subjective so so what i think we need to do is we need to think in terms of consistency boundaries and decompose the system into these small islands of strong consistency in sort of a river of constant change and uh, change and uncertainty and how do we do that then you know how can we how can we then craft sort of these autonomous islands of determinism and strong consistency in, in this sort of river of, of uncertainty? Uh, you know, if we're able to 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 do that, you know, we, we can actually live happily uh, forever, you know, under the illusion that time is absolute, that there is a single present, there is a single now, and that the world is deterministic because we we box that in, in, in into this island within our consistency bound. We can really have this atomic view on the state, uh, but it requires that we own our data exclusively. Each service, each component, whatever you know, you you you, you, you treat as your as your consistency boundary. Really need to be, to to own its data exclusively, and and you know to model this, you know, you know we can we can work with bounded context, and microservices, of course. Entities is, 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 is usually the best way to model these things. And they map very well to actors, you know, that, that I've been using for, for a decade now for these type of things. And, and the thing is that if we if we're then are able to craft these, sort of u, these units of consistency between them, you know, we, we have to rely on, on, on eventual consistency. And, you know, don't be surprised. It's really how, how the world works, as I said. I don't think we should fight reality. We should embrace it, and that can liberate ourselves in how we design systems better. And, you know, Pat Helen defines this really nice conceptual model for how to think about this, how to think about consistency in, in a distributed system. He talks about inside data as our, our, as our current present, you know, our current local present. That's our state. That's the state we have inside our consistency boundary. Then we have our outside data. That, that he calls blast from the past. You know, that's that's our facts, you know, arriving as events into our system or, the, or and that we are emitting out to the world. Uh, um, you know, if, if, you, if you're able to, 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 to do that, you can really work with values between these, these uh, uh, consistency boundaries, which gives other components, you know, a really good solid foundation for reasoning about what's going on because immutability, you know, is, is is name of the game there? Facts don't change, and 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 and, be, and between services, you know, he calls that hope for the future, which is almost 
poetic in a way. Uh, that's our commands and requests, you know. That, 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 that's someone asking someone else to do something. And, and, and you know, the, so why does, he call, why does he call it hope, you know? I think it's, I think it's really around that, you know, there's no promises here. You know, com, you know commands and requests, they can get dropped. Content can get, get garbled on the, on, the, on the network. They can even be, you know, rejected by the receiver because they're invalid or, or, or whatever. So you know, shared state, uh, so shared mutable state, as 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 I talked about, is unfortunately still the norm. And and the reason why it's why it's why it's problematic is that updating place, you know, uh, you know, you know, can really get us into trouble, especially if that's if 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 this mutable state is 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 globally shared, because it needs to be guarded and 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 so on. And things can just can you just you can receive an object and you look at it and it's one value and the next second is another one you know it's really hard to to do reasoning on this on 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 such a fragile foundation so so and it leads to really increased contention coordination wait time and so on so so you know i really think that we need to, we need to contain mutable state and and the best way to think about it is that we need to make it non observable to to the rest of the world you know fully contained in, in this safe haven you know of of strong consistency uh, but only used for local computations. So, uh, when you're done with your processing, then you know using mutable state in your business logic in the in your component, and you're ready to tell the world about the results. Then we can you know take the result, we create an immutable value based on that, and then we publish that as a fact for the outside world to act upon. Or to or or or, or we feel if we if we store it to 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 an a lot to an event log for example then you have a full uh, like the, the 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 full history in you know of, of the all the state changes that ever happened to that component in order so it can be replayed you know it can it, it can it can be replayed for replication for failure uh, recovery and so on. And as I said, you know, one of the best things with this is that then others can can have like can base reasoning on stable values that that simply don't just change. And and good tools for this, as I said, is like actors, entities, event driven architecture, event sourcing, CQRS, and and so on. Uh, another very important you know piece in the puzzle is is location transparency. You know, and and async message passing. In in my opinion, in my sort of experience. Uh, it, it gives us a one communication abstraction across all dimensions of scale, and 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 what I mean by that, yeah, we have one sort of programming model, one way of doing communication with unified semantics, regardless how the system is currently deployed, regardless of which which which, which topology it it currently has, which actually can can change. So instead of relying on different tools and semantics for for different levels of scale, meaning if we're working core to core or Container to container, server to server, data center to data center. You know, uh, uh, you know, we can we can we can uh, like for example using callbacks for a single core, for example. You know, or or, or use threads and locks across cores. So we use messaging or some pub sub across cores and data center. Instead, we can sort of if we use async message passing. You know, we we get location transparency as a unifier of all of these sort of dimensions of scale, from core to socket to CPU to container to server to rack to data center to region global, it all looks and feels and behaves the same according to, to, the, to, the, to the same semantics. So another really important thing is that we really need to distribute data and logic together. And, and here I'm going to you know, talk a little bit our experiences, you know, designing Akka as sort of a template, how, how, how it all can be put together. So lessons learned from, you know, thousands of, 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 of users uh, um, that we've been helping. So there are sort of three important principles here that you should always bundle state and logic. So sort of state should be embedded sort of in the application, sort of in a sort of in-memory database. And, 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 and uh, you know, that sounds more overkill than it is because these right patterns like event sourcing and, 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 and so on can really give you that. The, the benefit of this is like the application then is a system of record not the database and you distribute the data and not the database you know and these things map if you have logic and state you know fully 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 coupled you know in or sort of or bundled to, together it maps very well to actors to microservices and, and so on and one of the really good things is that it, that you can run it any any anywhere since it's exposed to the world through location transparency 
you know, it can actually be moved out, you know, to the end users running in the cloud or even even out at the edge for extremely low latency. And 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 you get sort of resilience almost built in because because if you if you move the component out to the outside to the to the furthest out edge, you know, you can actually lose the connection to the to the back end cloud and still continue to, to function as nothing happened because you have the state, you have the processing, and you have the user that you want to serve right at the same physical location. Then 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 as the if if the if the connection to the to the back end cloud is restored. You, you can just start making use of that for 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 backup propagation and for communicating with peers for replication and stuff like that. The other thing is that, that I found really important is like no node should really be be special. It should all be masterless peer to peer communication, and every node really needs to be able to serve serve both reads and writes. You know that eliminates bottleneck and performance degradation as you as you scale this system out. Uh, and, fi and finally, you know, you know, being able to have sort of masterless cloud-to-cloud -cloud, uh, uh, replication. You know, being able to to have a system that is where you have homogeneous execution across heterogeneous locations. You know, being able to to scale replicas, you know, across you know all these di all these dimensions of scale that I that 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 I talked about. And 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 you know, we we provide you know, the, the the backbone for that with with Akka sort of di di distributed data bed mesh that, that sits under, right underneath your, your application above the infrastructure and doing all the magic. So how are we implementing this? Yeah, a few, a few important patterns here is, is, is like the data, data sharding, for example, you know, each service here is sort of clustered from within. We have sort of a, and, and sort of forming an epi, you know, like, like, a, like a node ring using epidemic gossiping. And, and this means that nodes can join and leave as needed for, for truly transparent scalability. And we use consistent hashing here to sort of to, 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 to sort of spread out all the data across buckets in, in each one of these nodes. And and um, and if there's a miss, you know, request miss, you know, then we sort of do auto routing to, to the correct instance. Another very, very, very important you know thing is that this node can can come and go and sort of this, this node ring can, can can sort of grow and shrink. It's extremely important to be able to do Data rebalancing, be able to be, to, to 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 sort of re, rebalance the data across all the current available nodes, and finally, a very important thing is also that we we separate like queries from writes, meaning reads from writes. This means that we can that that that, that the system can write fully uncontended, you know, down to the event log, storing all the events in the system, you know, really employing the single writer principle, and and then you can. We can scale the reads, you know, separately from the from the writes. You know, I, this is really important because because you know sometimes you have a write mostly system and sometimes you have a read mostly system, and bundling it all together into one single database can make can make it hard to to you know like optimize uh, uh, your resources. And 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 it also like a, sort of a, as a as a as a nice side effect of this, it also supports multiple query query, query models since all the changes are then. Or in sort of replicated over to 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 the query side on the side. That means that you can have multiple subscribers to that, uh, to to those change sets, so to speak, to to these facts flow, 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 flowing, and and uh, in, in practice you can have a graph database. You know you, you might you, you might want to put things in, 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 into Postgres for back office. You might want to put things into Spark for 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 more thorough processing and so on, and they can all run in parallel. Uh, uh, you know, without really, really affecting to the right side at all. You know, this pattern is called C CQRS and is something that is, is that is quite useful. Uh, um, you know, I think ops elasticity is also equally important to workload as uh, elasticity, as I, as I talked about in the beginning. You know, being able to to have ops, you know, migrate and upgrade without without downtime and and to support this, you know, we have through three different replication schemes in Arca. We have sort of pinned. For, for, for ensuring data so sovereignty. We have multi-place with replicated read for global HA, the sort of active passive, and we have multi-place replicated write for, for like really continuous WAN-based replication where all, where all replicas are fully active, serving both reads and, and writes. And, this, and these different models really means that, you, that, that, that ops can, 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 get, can get a lot of flexibility of, of, of managing the application without any downtime, you know, changing the application, the data, changing the topology, even moving from single region to multi-region, multi you know, 
things like version and schema changes and so on, and even update the underlying infrastructure because that's completely decoupled to for, for, from how the application is 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 doing all of all of this. So so you know to sum to to sum things up, you know, using these principles, Akka's really been able to 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 support elasticity completely transparently across this whole application stack. Like from 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 bottom up, you know, scaling compute up and down. We usually like actors and streaming for the stuff like that. Scaling data, you know, automatic rebalancing and replication of data using things like event sourcing, you know, streaming projections, like sort of materialized views. Uh, on the on the on the on the on the app level, you know, we have sort of masterless clustering, as I talked about. You know, with with completely, you know, every all all rep, replicas really being able to to serve those writes and reads. And on the network level, you know, being able to, to, to stretch this out geographically across regions, across multi-cloud, you know, all provided, you know, by this, by this data fabric uh, uh, and, and this sort of single unified programming model that can really help you scale across all these uh, abstractions, you know. So, so uh, there's some stats there, you know, as well. I'm not going to go into those, but, 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 but I just want to, you know, close with, you know, these design principles. Uh, that I just talked about can really, in my experience, give you a ton for your for your work. You know, really, really yield amazing work. Uh, so really yield amazing results. Uh, you know, things like you know removing all the barriers to elasticity. You know, shockproof resilience and easy way to manage data and cloud uh, uh, sovereignty. You know that, that that many needs now with GDPR and other things. Look, and really being able to serve your clients with this with the small with the shortest response time. You know, with the highest throughput.